611. Um, I'm going to call the February 1st meeting of the Conservation Commission to order. Uh, those being present, Skip Clark, Jared Dantolucci, um, Scott Langren, Langren? Langren. Langren and yeah. Melissa Danza. Uh, first order of business is accepting of meeting minutes of January 18th. Move is written. Second. All those in favor by roll call. Clark, aye. Langren, aye. Gentilucci, aye. And Dan's abstain because I was absent. I know. All right. Application submissions. Uh, notice of intent from Jim Harity for 145 and 149 Turkey Hill Roads, lots 7 and 9. Do we have anyone here for that? Anyone online here for that? I'm on here. Okay. Um, but you, they're on the Dropbox, right? So this will be a public hearing for the next meeting? For the next mm -hmm. time, yeah. Um, um, on that, that one that we did with the cow pond on it, that, that one. He never got an order of conditions yet. So this is not for those. There's not those two? These are two different ones. Okay, but he's still looking for it. He's he never got an order of conditions that we did for that one. We issued it. Why we issued it, it because he said he doesn't have it. I was talking to Justin today. Justin said, yeah, he doesn't have it. He said he should. Because now you just I email it to him. him. Yeah. 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 I sent it to him. Um, he didn't tell me that he didn't receive it. Yeah. Who, who is it? This is Jim Harity. No, this is this might be different, but it just it's just the one across the street. The one across the street. In that little yeah, the little depression. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mailed it. Right, I mailed yeah. it to the um, wasn't that like Kristen and Senko or something like that? And I mailed it right to the applicant. Mm. That's maybe that's why. So maybe email it to is Julia is looking no, for it? Ju Justin's doing it, but oh. he said the owner. He was talking to the owner today, and he, didn't, he still didn't have one. I'm like, I said he should just call up and find out, but he should have it because yeah. we issued it. Hmm. So have, maybe have them email Tamika because yeah. with the electronic signatures we can just email. Yeah. Them to them. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So. Just so you know what's coming. <laughs> and that's fine. Also, I think one of these is um, one of the two estate lots where some of the clearing has happened on the back side. Mm -hmm. so that's something to remember too. Yep. All right. Um, so you said that is one of these two. Yeah. yeah. I think okay. it's seven. I think six and seven are the estate lots. So mm -hmm. I think one of them is the one to the right because it's a common shared driveway. Gotcha. All right, so moving into our hearings, our first one is notice of intent for the Department of Fish and Game for Long Pond replacement of boat ramp. That's me. All right. <laughs> uh, would you like me to stand up? Or? You can sit. It's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, um, thanks for having me. My name is George Willis. I'm uh, representing the uh, fish and Wildlife, as you mentioned, uh, specifically the Office of Boating and Fishing uh, Access. Uh, what we do is our state agency, and we oversee uh, public access for recreational boating, fishing um, at hundreds of sites across the state. Um, and we work with towns. We own some. We work with other state agencies. Um, in this specific case, for this project, we're working with DCR. They own the land. Um, it's part of the Rutland State Park uh, area. Um, so what I'm here to discuss is the boat ramp itself. Um, it's reached its, its lifespan is kind of over, so it needs to be uh, replaced. And um, that's the plan. So um, um, you guys have the plan. I, I wasn't sure if it would be up on the board or not. Um, yeah, if it's easier, I can definitely put it up. Let me just try. It couldn't hurt if, if it's possible. Absolutely, just That'd give me great. a hot second. I have to go into Zoom. Oh, man. To that share <laughs> message. To the Zoom room. Yeah. Will the host let me in, please? <laughs> okay. The checks for the gun. It's not, it means it's their holding company, Thank you. I guess, and I'll speed. Oh, okay. Um, I hope it's not Thomas I'm sure they're coming along, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, shit. Shoot. Sorry. Can, <laughs> can the <laughs> so host, you're so fired. I know. Make me a co-host so I can share or allow it for everyone. Please. I'm sorry. 
whoever's back there. I know I am fired. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for bearing with me. So yeah, this is a, um, the plan of the project. Uh, the existing conditions are roughly similar. Um, the ramp itself is not, doesn't look as good though, because it's 30 or 40 years old. Um, the main issue is the ice um, gets pushed in a northerly direction, and it, as it does that, it drags all of our ramp pads with it, and they've shifted at least six feet, if not more. It's hard to tell because you can't see under the water at the the far end of the ramp, but um, that along with um, just usage, uh, people power load their boats, um, you know, running their engine full blast, trying to get onto their trailer, and it, it um, erodes the base of our ramps. So the new ramp pads are going to be a lot bigger. The existing ones are 12 feet wide and a foot, um, well, a, a foot wide and 12 feet long, I guess. The new ones are three feet wide and much more substantial. Um, so the footprint's going to be the same. Um, we'll have to remove the old ramp, prepare a new base, um, and then slide the new ramp in. We don't like put the equipment out in the water and, and drop the ramp pads. We assemble them on land and push them into the water um, to try to minimize disturbance as much as possible. Um, and all these pads bolt to an anchor at the shoreline um, to hold them in place. They all, they're all bolt together like a chain. So um, we're gonna propose pouring a new anchor slab as well. There's an existing anchor slab, but um, we would prefer put a new one in this, um, rather than reuse it. Um, so two ramps, um, we could do one at a time, but uh, we'll try to do this during the off season while the water's uh, especially low and um, probably just do them both at the same time. Um, there's another ramp like 100 feet north. Um, I'm not sure what the purpose is. It's not our ramp, but you could get access to the pond um, during construction. Um, anyway, uh, another thing is we have a pro uh, provisions in here to install a new boarding float system. Um, anyone who puts boats in the water would appreciate this. Um, and it also helps um, people with accessibility issues board their boats or can use. Um, it's really for anyone. You can't fish from it though. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the project in a nutshell. Um, as I mentioned, we do it during periods of low water, uh, which would either be early spring or late fall. Um, we don't want to interfere with the boating and fishing season anyway. Um, been in contact with DCR's water supply um, section. The watershed protection um, paperwork is uh, should be all set. It's uh, in the works. And we've gotten a temporary access permit from uh, DCR as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's it in general. I, I, the whole project will be encapsulated by a silk curtain, um, a, a, you know, a floating boom with a silk curtain um, for obvious reasons. And um, any stockpiling will be done upland. Um, I don't suspect much. The only material we really have to have on hand is crushed stone, which uh, we'll try to get double washed um, clean stone. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's really it. Uh, upland erosion controls are more just to control water entering our site, not really the water leaving our site. Um, the ramp itself has a little bit of a crown to it with two gutters going down each uh, edge. So um, we shouldn't get too much water uh, entering our work zone. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's really it. If, um, Anyone has any questions? 
questions from the commission? No. no. I'm just curious, when you do the installation of the boat ramps, I'm assuming at the time of year you do it, is the water level low enough that it's actually below the bottom of the installation? That's, no, that's usually not the case. Okay. We can get maybe halfway down the ramp. Um, if, so, as I mentioned, we can slide the new one in uh, off the shore, but obviously the, the one that's in, the, in there existing will have to reach in with an excavator bucket mm -hmm. uh, to extract that and to also prepare a new base um, as best you can. It's hard to see underwater, but yeah. um, um, I'll, I'll either be the one holding the, um, the level rod or, you know, I'll be, I'll be out there at all times doing that. Um, but yeah, there will be in water work. Okay. Um, I, I don't, the, from what I've seen of this site, I, I don't think it ever, I mean, maybe in, in a drought situation it might get a little, but I, I, we're not expecting to do it in the drought, okay. uh, maybe half of it, ideally. Yeah, I was just curious. I don't know if you like sectioned off the area and kind of pumped out the water to drop it temporarily or if it was even necessary. Um, for these type of ramps, we don't dewater typically. Okay. Um, for our coastal ones, we certainly do. But um, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and these are these are casks, a free cast, so um, we don't have to necessarily do them in the dry. Right. So yeah, there's no, we're not, we're not uh, going to de be dewatering. Okay. What's the expected um, timeline, start to finish, from when you set up to when you're out of there? Do you think, ideally? Um, ideally, um, so we'll do this in house with our own crew. So we can commit, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, there's no scheduling conflicts or anything. Yep. So I mean, one to two weeks, I okay. have to say. I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard to, this should be pretty cut and dry. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's an existing ramp, so it should, you know, a day or two of removal, um, and a day or two of prep, mm -hmm. and then the most time will probably be just uh, installing it. And pour, if we do the port in place uh, work, that'll add a few days. So I'd say two weeks. Um, you know, you know how that goes though. That yeah. is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally. <laughs> that's the um, that's, that's best case scenario, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what we'll shoot for. Now the floating um, dock system, as I mentioned, that's, that's kind of, uh, that will happen eventually. I don't know if it'll necessarily happen uh, right away. Um, ideally we pour that boarding ramp when we have the truck. Uh, delivering concrete, mm -hmm. but the boring floats may not be installed. Um, we don't have them on hand. We'll have to, that's another contract. We'll have to order them. Um, but yeah, I, two to, let's say two to three weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Do you plan on having any materials stockpiled, whether it's what you've taken out or the crushed stone while you're waiting? Um, ideally, we'll direct load into a, um, a small dump truck okay. um, for, the, for the removed materials. Um, if not, I mean, it's it, it actually, if we start pulling out ramp pads, it, it'll stack up pretty quick. So if we do stockpile, which we probably will for the sake of, you know, getting the project moving, um, the large parking area above this, um, I'm envisioning, um, you know, out of the buffer area, um, in a grass area on the other side of the parking lot, um, covered and surrounded with um, So if we condition field. something like that, that would be okay? What's that? If we condition something about stockpiling. Oh, so absolutely. Like, okay. Yeah, I, I fully expect to. I mean, it, it would make sense for us to stockpile, especially like the snow one, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to have that on hand. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just thinking ringed with erosion control is tarped at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's our standard condition. Part. Anything else from commissioners? Well, so there, you probably know the answer to this. There isn't anything required when you're doing disturbance to land underwater, right? Like any sort of mitigation or anything like that. Um, I didn't think so. I mm, no, because I think of culvert replacements and there's nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, we just did. It's a lot easier on the Sudbury Res when the DCR did their boat ramps because they can draw down the water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that project's a little easier. Yeah, that's yeah, right. But there wasn't anything on there yeah. either. Okay, that's right. So, no. Okay. Um, are there any questions from the public? 
those on Zoom can unmute. Hearing none, is there a reason not to close the hearing? I think we have a DEP number. Motion. I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Is there a second? I'll oh, second. All those in favor by roll call. <coughs> Lang or nay. Clock aye. <laughs> Gentle Lucci aye. Danza aye. All right. <coughs> um, do we want to issue now or come back to it at the end? Do it now. Can you issue? Now? We're issue. All right. Um, so conditions we were talking about stockpiling, um, that they are to be ringed with the road controls and covered at the end of each work day. Um, did we want to condition double wash stone? Mm. Yeah. Mm. He's going to use double wash anyway, so we're going to say wash, he's going to use double wash. So. Yeah. Good, no, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? I don't think so. All right, I will accept a motion to that effect. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Second? Second. All those in favor, by roll call. Can you can start. <laughs> Langer and I. <laughs> Danza, aye. All right, so Tamika will get that order of conditions to you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. You can hang if you want, otherwise I don't blame you if you leave. <laughs> I'll hang up for a minute. It's not to be rude. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we won't hold it against you. All right. Um, I lost my agenda. All right, so the next hearing is Town of Rutland, Molten Pond Dam, Pomegusset Road. Is anyone here for that? Are you here for that? No one? Um, Hi, James. good evening. This is John Morgan, the CHA. Perfect. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Take us away. Sure. All right. Well, uh, first off with me here tonight is Kevin Thatcher. Uh, our project engineer for the project, and James Hall, our uh, environmental scientist. So we're here to represent the project. I'm not sure if uh, the town DPW is on the on the call. Is Joe Buckley here? I don't see him. I don't think so. Okay. I think we are the town of Rutland. <laughs> Fortunately, not Joe. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so uh, good evening, everyone. This is John Morgan. Uh, so we're here for the uh, notice of intent for the rehabilitation and improvement of Pomegasa Road, Route 56. Uh, this is a town of Rutland DPW uh, project. They are the proponent. And uh, <coughs> DOT is also involved in this project. They are the uh, they are the uh, agency that will be funding the project uh, through the Transportation Improvement Program, which includes state and federal funding for construction. And MassDOT is also involved in the uh, review of the design of the project uh, because of the state funding. And they will also be responsible for the construction administration of the project once it's ready to go to construction. They'll uh, be responsible for oversight of the contract. Um, so I, I guess I will go through, I guess, a, um, an overview of what the project is all about. I'll turn it over to Kevin to give some information on the drainage design and improvements we're proposing. And then I'll also turn it over after that to James James to talk about what we have for uh, environmental resource areas along the corridor and a uh, overview of the permits that are required and, uh, and uh, where we are in the permitting process. So I guess first off, uh, this project is a one mile long project, it starts at uh, the uh, intersection of Route 122A Main Street and continues north one mile to ends at the intersection of Brunel Drive. Uh, the within the project limits is the uh, the Molten Pond uh, dam replacement, and 
Uh, that project was originally brought before the Conservation Commission, um, I think back in uh, 2018, but it uh, has an order of conditions already issued for the work proposed to replace the culvert at Malton Pond Dam. And uh, that order of conditions was extended back in October of 2021. So although it's within the project limits, uh, what we're here for today would be the uh, roadway portion of the project. Uh, these two projects have been combined into one project where the roadway and the dam will be constructed uh, together. Uh, and the schedule for this project would be uh, we're looking to finalize our permitting uh, by the spring of 2022. Uh, we'll be submitting our final design to Mass DOT in April of 2022. And then the town will be uh, working on their uh, right of way acquisitions necessary, which would be uh, temporary and permanent construction easements, um, some utility easements. And once uh, they have uh, completed the right of way process, we would be looking to advertise the project in September of 2022, and Mass DOT will uh, handle that uh, bidding and advertising of the project. And then uh, we would expect that uh, construction would start in uh, spring 2023. So that's really the timeline we're looking at. Um, we are on a tight timeline. Uh, for completing the permitting and design and the right-of-way acquisitions because we need to complete it in the federal fiscal year of 2022, which ends in September, at the end of September. So we really need to uh, be done with everything uh, by that time. All right, uh, so I'll go through a few of the, uh, the highlights of what we're proposing to do. Uh, the, uh, I guess the purpose of the project would be to uh, address the, the deteriorating, deteriorating infrastructure and also uh, enhance safety along the roadway. Uh, we'll be looking to improve safety for all roadway users, uh, not just vehicles, but also pedestrians and uh, bicyclists. Uh, so some of the improvements that we are proposing would include uh, pavement rehabilitation. So the existing pavement uh, is uh, nearing the end of its service life and we'll be looking to do more than just a, uh, not looking just to put an overlay on this roadway, we're looking to reconstruct the road in order to, to uh, provide a good foundation for uh, the roadway to last a long time. Um, we'll be proposing pavement reclamation which uh, will include uh, pulverizing the existing pavement and uh, mixing that with some of the uh, existing gravel sub-base uh, and using that, uh, that reclaimed mixture as a base for a new roadway. And then once that uh, new material is put down as a base, we would then put uh, three layers of new asphalt on top of that we have a total of seven and a half inches of new pavement. So this uh, this this roadway should last uh, quite a while, probably uh, at least 20 years out of this roadway before you uh, have to do any, any significant maintenance to it. Um, we'll also be looking to, uh, to widen the roadway. The existing roadway width is about 24 feet wide. Uh, there's, 11 to about 11 foot lanes and one foot, 11 to 12 foot lanes and one to two foot shoulders currently uh, along the roadway. Uh, so we'll be looking to widen the roadway in order to provide better for bicyclists and provide more room on the, for you know emergency pull off into the shoulder. Uh, we're proposing a 32 foot wide roadway. Uh, so it'll be uh, 11 foot lanes five foot shoulders on either side. So uh, the five foot shoulder is the minimum width for a, uh, to accommodate a bicycle uh, per the Mass DOT standards. Uh, we are looking to meet Mass DOT standards since they are reviewing and approving this project and uh, they will be uh, 
funding the construction. So we do have to meet their 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 standards, and uh, the 11 foot lane is also the minimum um, width for a travel lane uh, for the, an arterial roadway such as this. So we're not going wider than we necessarily need to. We're we're, we're meeting those minimums. Uh, we're trying to balance the uh, the needs for the for improving safety without making the road too wide and causing a lot of impacts to uh, private properties along the corridor. Uh, we will also be uh, looking to add a uh, sidewalk on one side of the road. Currently there's uh, very little sidewalk on this project. There's a short section, I think, uh, near the uh, near the ball field, but on the east side, but very little uh, sidewalk along this section. We'll be adding a uh, a sidewalk on the east side of the roadway um, for the entire length of the project from uh, Main Street to uh, Richards Road, and then we'll have a crosswalk uh, proposed at uh, at Richards, and that will connect to uh, we'll continue the sidewalk uh, a couple hundred feet up Richards Road to connect to some existing sidewalks that are in that neighborhood. So we'll be connecting that, that neighborhood at uh, Brunel Drive and Richards Road to um, this new sidewalk uh, along Route 56 and we'll connect to the other uh, subdivisions and uh, streets along uh, within the corridor. Uh, so the new sidewalk that we're proposing would be uh, five and a half feet wide. That includes a, uh, a five foot asphalt sidewalk and a uh, six inch uh, wide vertical granite curving uh, for a total width of five and a half feet. Um, and then, uh, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the improvements that we're proposing along the roadway. And we also have extensive drainage improvements. Uh, we'll be replacing uh, guardrail where it exists uh, to improve safety. Um, and uh, we'll be replacing all of the, uh, of the signing along the corridor, new signs, uh, new pavement striping uh, once the uh, paving is completed. So uh, several different things that we're trying to do to improve uh, safety for not only the vehicles, but also the pedestrians and, the, uh, and bicyclists as well. Uh, so I think at this point, I could turn it over to Kevin Thatcher to give us an overview of what we're proposing for drainage improvements along the car. All right, thanks, John. Um, so drainage through, through the project corridor is, uh, is currently a mix of both open and closed drainage. Um, the uh, majority is closed drainage. Um, there are a total of, uh, I guess, Eight uh, closed systems of varying sizes with pipe fall, pipe outfalls along the um, along the project length. Um, we'll be utilizing those points. We'll be replacing outfalls at five of um, those eight locations, and uh, two others will be connecting to um, with a new system just just near the out outlet and uh, one system at the northern end that uh, should remain mostly untouched. Um, the closed systems that are, are out there are, um, are older systems. They're primarily uh, corrugated metal pipe, which is past its um, um, useful lifespan. Uh, in addition, all the systems have uh, catch basins which are connected in series with little or no sumps to them, so they provide little, uh, little uh, treatment for uh, stormwater um, within the project. Um, all of the proposed uh, system that we're looking to put in uh, will have catch basins offline from the trunk line with deep sumps um, to help um, provide for additional um, pretreatment and settlement of uh, of, uh, of particles from, from the stormwater. Um, we're also looking to uh, perpetuate the uh, open drainage um, to, um, as much as we can 
um, on the west side. Uh, we can't on the east side with the introduction of, of curb, uh, the length of the project, um, but we are on the west in, in a number of areas. Um, in addition to creating some smaller areas, also you know improving the uh, performance of what's intended to be open drainage out there now, but isn't functioning as such um, due to the need for regrading of the shoulder. Um, so, uh, so that's that's what we're planning to do out there. Uh, we're, you know, we are providing definitely some improvements in um, the function of the all the stormwater systems within the project. So, uh, with that, uh, I guess I can pass it on to Jay to talk about our uh, permitting process. Thanks very much. Can I get control of the site plan just so people can get a better feel uh, for what? Uh, or maybe have Kevin get control of the site plans just to um, go over some of the resources where they're located. Um, just to uh, give people a better perspective. Easier to show it in a plan than not, in case may be. Are you saying to show, um, to share on your, on your side? Yeah. You should be able to. Kevin, can you go online and get the, um, the site plans? Maybe I can do it. Excellent. So, as John mentioned, this is uh, the Pongressa Road, Route 56 uh, rehabilitation. Um, for this project, actually, there's there's less impacts of, in, of things than, than more, as the case may be. Uh, we are not going to be impacting any BBW, bordering vegetative wetlands. We're not impacting any IVW, isolated vegetative wetlands. There is no land or water. Um, and waterways and water bodies with the uh, this road portion of the project, um, and there's no borderline slip flooding that will be impacting with the road portion of the project. Um, in addition, there's no natural heritage endangered species habitat. Uh, there is no FEMA flood zone uh, associated with the road. There are no ACACs areas of critical environmental concern, and there are no wellhead protection areas. Uh, however, there is an outstanding resource water associated with Molten Pond and Millbrook, and that actually also extends up to the west and north of the dam itself. Uh, there are impacts to that area are in uplands along the, and adjacent to the road, but there's actually no impacts to outstanding resource waters and wetlands themselves. So really, we're only going to have buffer zone impacts and then a small amount of riverfront area impacts outside of um, outside of the dam work, the dam project. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to point out to you where the wetlands are. Uh, so Kevin, if we could go to wetland A, obviously there, and so you can see wetland A is quite a, quite a ways off the side of the road, so there'll no, be impact of that. Can we scroll to the right or the north and go to wetland B, which is going to be the dam area? And one more. So most of this is going has already been permitted for the um, the uh, replacement of the spillway and the dam itself. We're only going to have a small amount of riverfront area outside of the um, the permitted um, dam NOI, and that's going to be a little bit to the north and a little bit to the south of the dam itself. Um, and then as we move forward, let's keep on going to the right, uh, to the north, and we'll have wetland C. Actually, there's an intermittent channel there where the um, cursor is, and then as we continue to the right and the north, we have wetland C between um, Brunel Drive and uh, Richards Avenue, and then north of Brunel Drive, we have wetland uh, D. And uh, basically, because we did not have enough room to replicate wetlands that are going to be impacted with the approved dam uh, notice of intent work, we actually are replicating 1,044 square feet of, um, of new wetland uh, between the road and the wetland itself. Uh, and you can see there's going to be some shrubs and trees planted there uh, to replicate that and restore that. Um, so I guess at this point, I don't want to go into numbers unless people want to go into them, because um, I, I know people's eyes tend to glaze over a little bit. But um, I guess at this point, do we, anybody have any questions uh, for us? Um, I noticed there was, I think, a peak rate increase for one of the discharge points. 
Is that right? Um, just looking at the stormwater calcs, I think um, there's at least one standard that you are at least meeting to the maximum extent possible, yes. but not fully. Can you discuss that yep. a little bit? Yeah, so we looked at, uh, from an overall sense, we looked at five, um, five design points um, for the project. Um, and um, four of them, I believe, increase a uh, small amount. One does decrease. Uh, I think that's one that's in the vicinity of the Miles Road intersection in part because um, some drainage area is redirected. Um, so, I mean, mainly, obviously, we're increasing impervious area because we're widening the roadway. Um, you know, we don't have um, any space or opportunity um, within the right of way to provide any detention to mitigate those peaks. Um, so, so there are some small increases, but uh, as far as you know, uh, limiting as best we can. You know, like I said, we have uh, we have promoted uh, open drainage. You know, where we can, we're not to, to trying to collect everything off the roadway, which would lead to um, slightly larger peak increases as well. Um, but uh, so mainly, like I said, they're you know, small increases um, due to increased impervious area and an inability to provide detention facilities in the right of way. Okay. I think it's mostly just deep sumps you have throughout the roadway is mostly your treatment? Correct. And then, said so likewise, non non structural practices as far as you know, the open drainage allowing um, sheet flow off the roadway. Mm -hmm. Jared, do you have any questions? Just going back to the the catch basins, you mentioned they'll have four foot deep sumps. I did see that in the report. I didn't see a detail for the catch basin. So just curious, uh, in addition to the sumps, will those have hoods or traps on the outlet pipes? Um, we are not currently proposing hoods on them. Okay. Is that something that, I don't know if maybe that would be a question for MassDOT or maybe it's the DPW. The, the hoods, I would, I would suggest considering putting hoods or traps in those catch basins because the sump is good. The sump will allow sediment to collect so that it can be maintained. Um, any floatables, debris, things like that, if you put a hood in, it'll catch those as well. So it, it does provide some better pretreatment if you do both the sump and the hood. Yep. No, understood. I think, you know, we're um, open to doing that if that's your preference. Yeah, did you meet the TSS with the ORW requirements for the removal? Um, I, yes, I mean, we're meeting, uh, as far as the OR, within the ORW, um, you know, we're um, areas there where we're, we're trying to limit our, our closed drainage and, and you know, where we do our, our um, you know, the catch basins do help provide for our, our TSS removal. So I think the only thing you haven't met fully in the stormwater standards is that peak attenuation rate. Peak rate? Uh, correct, I believe so. Okay. Yep. Right. And what um what did you use for your rainfall amounts? Did you um the NOAA Atlas fourteen or the current model? Do you know off the top of your head? I believe I used NOAA fourteen. Okay. I have to that is generally what I try to do. I'll have to. It's the new standard, but it's not required yet. So yep. I'm just curious. Yeah. No, and it's and it's different where you go different places. People also like the Northeast Regional Climate Center data, which yeah. tends to be more extreme for larger storms. But uh, yeah, NOAA 14 is a better all purpose usage. Um, Any other questions from the commission? Skip, you have anything? Jared, anything else for now? No, I'm good for now. Thank you. Um, is there any <coughs> questions or comments from the public? Anyone in person? Anyone on Zoom? I'm not hearing anything. Uh, all right, so we don't have any comments from DEP. Is there anything you're waiting from, Tamika, from them? Um, 
we don't, I don't believe we have the DV number yet. No, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Um, did you get a butter cards and everything? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we will have to continue this until our next meeting, um, which is going to be February 15th. And then, uh, so we will see you then, and hopefully by then we can get a DEP number. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. All right, motion to continue. So moved. <laughs> Second. All those in favor by roll call. Don't think we're not. Chance of Lucci eye. Chance of eye. All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. too. Okay. Next up, um, old and new business discussion. A and R on Ridge Road, Wachusett Road, resident inquiry. Yeah, that'd be me, I guess. Okay. <laughs> My name is uh, Bob Soderberg. I live on Ridge Road. I uh, apologize. I would have sent you some files to put That's up okay. here, but I have copies. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We're a light board today, so it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. More. <coughs> Um, so, yeah, the reason I'm um, here, um, my property directly abuts um, the Zava property, which the A&R was, was presented to the town of Brooklyn about uh, three, three, four weeks ago. And my neighbor, Jen Williams, is here also. Her property also abuts it. Um, my main concern, um, if you look, let me find my property. So first of all, on the material on page one, I have the A&R map as it, as it was represented to the town uh, planning committee. Mm -hmm. Page two, um, if you look at that, that's a, I'll, I'll get into the discussions of these, but I just want to let you know what's, what's in here first. Page two, is, it's a mass mapper map of the property. Page three, I have a mock up, uh, map of the A and R map that my son did that kind of puts in the buffer zones for the wetlands and the streams. And then just to back up the data that he did, I put the Title V buffer zone area in there. And that, that's pretty much it. So the reason, my, my main concern, is when I was looking at the A and R, um, they showed the wetlands, but they did not show the streams. So I don't know if that's too early to do all that stuff in this process or when Sometimes. it actually goes in. Uh, yeah. So I, I just wanted to make the Conservation Commission aware that these two streams are not on the A&R. So I, I asked, looking my uh, unprofessional uh, knowledge of this, looking at it, I'd say three to five of the proposed lots could be affected by those streams that are not on the A&R map. So these streams, if, if you look, let's, see, let's look at page two. You can see the streams. I put little arrows. I, you can, well, if you look, it's kind of hard to really explain this. If you look at um, where it says about 42, mm -hmm. that's part of the Zolling property. Below that, there's a road. It's, well, it's not abandoned. It's a public road that's hasn't been in use in probably 50 years. Um, below that, you see two arrows. One is in the upper right-hand corner. One is in the lower left-hand corner. Those are the two streams in question. My property is directly below that. Um, as you can see, both those streams feed into my property and ultimately into Jen's property. If you look back on page one, uh, the a and r now, those streams aren't even mentioned. And there's a couple house lots where the stream is, uh, with close proximity in some cases. So th that, is, that is my only concern, is, you know, that was not highlighted in the a and r Just wanted to make the Conservation Commission aware. I don't, I don't know what you guys would normally do in a case like this. Or yeah. Well, most of this is going to come down to a lot by lot basis as they get sold, and every lot's oh, going to have every every lot's going to have to have its own set of rules. Oh, 
So it'll probably come out then. Okay. I, I just oh no, it's know. still it's it's easier to know yeah. something's coming, yeah, it but be. it, because it's not it's not a subdivision or whatever like that, so it's going to come lot by lot as they get sold off. Oh, I see. And then every or every lot will get its own set of conditions based on what's there. Yeah, so typically they have the A and R. You know, the downside of the A and R, I think, like Scott was getting to, it's not a full subdivision process. So there's existing okay. frontage on existing roads, so they don't need to get a subdivision approval from planning board, um, mm -hmm. which typically means that if it's a subdivision, they're creating a new road. So that's usually when they come to CONCOM as well to do a full notice of intent, kind of, or the project application that we've been hearing for the roadway and infrastructure, and then they do it house by house. And that way it's usually easier because we do one big site visit, you know, look at the site as a whole, and then we'd find mm -hmm. these, you know, streams and other wetlands that we might call out. When it's done like this, you know, then it usually comes in lot by lot. Um, you know, we look at it holistically as a whole, you know, as, as we're residents too, we can take stops by. Um, and what now happens in town is we have the online building permitting software. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm filling in for the chair, I'm only the vice chair. So our chair, Peter Crane, gets a notification saying there's been a building permit request submitted. And he takes a look at typically, or usually, what you've printed out too, which is the, you know, the state GIS, yeah, which shows yeah, those yeah. streams. Okay. Um, and that's a really easy indicator to him, says that you need to come at least have a conversation with us. Okay. Um, so depending on what kind of stream it is, and you can, I just pulled up Mass Mapper again, and you know they are definitely there. So mm -hmm. it is definitely something that we'll look at when the building permits come through. Um, but I think, like Scott said, it is kind of a lot by lot as they come in. So we won't necessarily have a permit for the whole project, but we are looking at every single building lot as they get the building permit request put in. So even if it's sold as a group of 22 lots, you would look at each individual yep. one yep. and yep. build a permit that's, yep. that's yep. bold. Yes. Okay. So this is definitely helpful for us. You know, we can give this to Peter as a reminder, too, that if he does get anything on Ridge Road or, you know, in this area, to double check and make sure where it is in relation to, um, you know, where we believe the streams are. Well, let me ask you this. Um, so let's say with the wet, not the wetlands, but look, look at those two little streams there. Mm -hmm. um, what would you do to address something like that if someone tried pushing a house lot so into that area? Our jurisdiction, um, depending on the kind of stream, so there's intermittent mm -hmm. streams and there's perennial streams. So mm -hmm. basically the symbol of it is it runs all year or it doesn't, you know, or it has a certain size watershed. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's an intermittent stream, then our jurisdiction extends from the stream itself out to 100 feet. Um, okay. If it's perennial, then we have 200 feet, and that's called a riverfront area, which has a whole other set of standards that's a little bit more complex, I'll say. Um, it's a little bit stricter. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's just that 0 to 100, and that's the normal, we call it buffer zone for any other wetland resource area as well. Um, we don't have a local wetlands bylaw in town, um, so we cannot enforce more than what the state regulation is. Mm -hmm. um, but we do try and hold, I'd say, a 20-foot no touch. Um, so you have to be at least 20 feet away from the edge of the wetland. But again, that's just policy. It's not a local bylaw yet. We are working on it. Okay. Um, but you know, we try and have them pull back as much as possible. Um, you know, we've been putting, implementing like either boulders or signage to say you can't encroach any further. Um, we put limits on like where they can put lawn debris, etc. So we make sure it's not going in the stream. Um, and essentially, they'd have to come to us with a fully engineered plan that meet the state regs for us to review and approve. Okay. Um, so I'd say, you know, we've been approving things that come within the 20-foot mark. Um, that's not extreme, I'll say, for what's been coming before us. Um, you know, there's been some of the other, like this a &Rs, like on Turkey Hill. Those are some recent ones recently where they had existing frontage. Um, it's usually the driveways that are the closest point, um, but we try, you know, we try to work with homeowners, landowners, etc. to obviously, especially if they split them up lot by lot and, you know, it's individual people building them versus one large developer, you know, everyone mm -hmm. wants something different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if they come to us with a holistic plan of the whole area, it's a lot easier to be consistent throughout, um, but with this being 
house by house, most likely it'll be just trying to enforce the setbacks as much as possible. Okay, you had mentioned 20 foot to the wetland. Mm -hmm. Where does the 100 come in? The 100, so that's just the extent of our jurisdiction. So if, if something's 101 feet away from the edge of the stream, then we technically have no say until dirt gets into the stream. Is that, no, that was a little backwards. The 100, 100 feet is where our jurisdiction starts. But we do allow stuff a lot of times up to 20 feet away. Okay. Yes. yes, sir. That's get that. It, it is far 100, 100 feet triggers us to actually be able to do something. Yeah. Excuse me? 100, 100 feet triggers us to actually have, be able to do oh, something. Okay. And then it's we work with whoever, depending what it is for a stream. I see. And then adjust and, you know, like, like we said, 20 feet is basically as close, depending what it is. You know, and that could be great and that could be whatever. It doesn't mean the house is going to be 20 feet away. Yeah. Yeah. So... But the 100 feet triggers it so we can actually say something. What about the stream, a perennial stream? Uh, you, you mentioned 200 feet. Mm -hmm. What is your... So you it'd be this to go with the 200? We... Uh, so it, it, they, anything within 0 to 200 feet, we review and approve. So they don't have to stay 200 feet away. It's the same. You have to stay at least the 20 feet away as a policy. Um, but... From a stream? From a stream. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends, you know, like, it depends what it is. Behind, yeah. yeah. Depends very what it is. But if that is a perennial stream, if the riverfront regulations kick in, mm -hmm. that, like you mentioned, they, they're, they're much more stringent than working in a, a buffer zone to a BBW or a buffer zone to an intermittent stream. Mm -hmm. Riverfront, it's much more difficult to build in riverfront. And I think they look at it as a common project still. So. Yes. I'd have to um, think about that. Depending it, on depends. Yeah. it depends. It yeah. depends. So there's only a certain amount of riverfront you can disturb for a project as a whole. So that's kind of sometimes where these type of approvals, the ANRs, get a little tricky. And it's not the builder trying to be shady. It's mm -hmm. just the way that the regs are written. I see. Um, it's that you know sometimes it's a common development is very clearly defined as one builder building the whole thing, and then that way they can only disturb so much of the riverfront area. Um, but other times they can look at them lot by lot and each one, you know, can disturb up to 75% or something like that. So mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. different ways that you can look at it. It's just, it's harder to give you a defined answer when it is through an A&R process uh, just by default. One other question, as, as a butters, would, would we be notified if you, if you have to get involved yep. So mm -hmm. you okay. as an abutter, any property within a hundred feet of the property line will get notified. Oh great. Okay. And most likely these are still one big parcel in the assessor's maps, mm -hmm. so it'd probably go off the master list. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I had. Yeah, the the reason I, I kinda raised a little concern, everything's marked. Mm -hmm. I mean, streams are marked, mm -hmm. but I didn't see it on the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes, I think like you said, sometimes this, the a &R process comes before the rest of the permitting, mm -hmm. so they kind of get the large areas just because that's what planning board likes to see, you know, as much wetlands as they can. Sometimes they just need to do um, dimensional requirements. Some towns require so much upland area. I don't think that's the case in Rutland, so that, you know, is no factor. But um, a lot of the times it's just the general natural features, and they haven't quite refined yet. All right, well, thank you. Uh, you answered all my questions. Oh, do you get involved in Chapter 61? I saw Chapter 61A on the agenda here. Because this property is presently a we, 61A. The town gets first right of refusal, mm -hmm. um, so it is part that the compound makes a vote if they want, you know, the Board of Selectmen. It ultimately, it comes down to the select board, but okay. um, they'd be the one extending there. The Open Space Committee doesn't have any money to pay We have this. zero <laughs> money. The Open Space Committee right now is just charged with updating the Open Space and Rec yeah. Plan. Okay. Yeah. That'd, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Are you all set? No, okay. I don't think so at this time. And if you do... I don't if think you do, else on yeah. Zoom does, but... Because my brother's on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yep. If anyone has questions, please feel free to speak up. Um, otherwise, Tamika is our wonderful admin. Her email is on the town's website, so feel free to reach out to her. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing this, though. I mean, I'm looking at yes. the GIS maps, and I'm seeing more wetlands on this plan than I'm seeing on the GIS map. So that's yeah. very helpful for us mm -hmm. to be able to know. Because any of these lots that they propose to build on them, if any earth disturbance, is within 100 feet of 
up, say, a typical wetland, or if that is a perennial stream, 200 feet of that stream, they will have to come in front of this board. Okay. And, and so they'll need a permit from us if yeah. they want to build that close to a resource area. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of water over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, based on based on these plans, I can imagine it's got to be pretty yeah. wet. Okay. Well, great. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again. This is helpful. Yes. All right. Um, follow up on clearing on a state lot, Turkey Hill Road. We touched upon it briefly, but you want to give an update? To yeah. Me? So just today, I, the letter I sent him came back undeliverable from the post office saying that the address it wasn't deliverable. So my guess is they have a PO box. Unfortunately, after talking to town staff, literally the only contact information we have for the owners are that home address in Holden, which is where I mailed it to. So I'm not sure. Could you look at the Holden GIS and look up their property and see if their mailing address is different? That's a very good idea. Sometimes that helps me and sometimes it does not. <laughs> That's a good idea to try it though, yeah. Because um, nobody on town staff knows who the builder is. Uh, the, imbu the building inspector went down there about a week ago just to see if maybe he could s somebody was out there working. And they were working on the property next door and said they hadn't seen anybody there for like three weeks. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone. So we've tried, but... They cleared it and just, left. Yeah, and so I don't... Uh, I'll try the GIS. Like 10 feet so I'm long. assuming there's no That's building right. permit has been applied yeah. for. Or nope, okay. I checked in viewpoint. No building yeah. permit yet. I think they finally pulled the machine out, though. Yeah. That was even sitting back there for a couple weeks. That's good. I was surprised they left it. Okay. And follow up. Detention Basin Concerns, Bryce Lemon Estates. That's me. Welcome. <laughs> so, I think a lot of this confusion is my fault. Uh -oh. I asked Clee to send you the latest electronic set of plans. Okay. And he did. This was an exception as far as the plan sheet I look at has this in it. Mm -hmm. So this was dated, um, the latest revision was 5-28-19. So I sent that to Tamika, I'm sure you've all seen that. Does that make more sense with what you guys saw out there? <coughs> this, is, this is before my time. Mm -hmm. So I believe the shape looks like what's out there, um, and I I do know all the components that were put in. They were put in before my time, but they were all shot for elevations, and they were all located uh, before they were put in. You think you had more questions than I did last time? You have more of that background than I do. Well, I asked him when that, that even even that other piece was developed before he was there. Yeah. <clears throat> and that. Um, get that, and then what's the deal with the standpipe getting taken out all the time when we get a lot of rain? Okay, so. Because that's, I, I know that kind of comes up with the gen all the time. It's like I go by and the friggin' pipes, I was like, okay. All right, so <clears throat> typically what happens is a means that is put in a temporary detention pond to relieve the water when it gets up to a certain height. Now, a couple things come into factor. There's always an overflow pipe, which mm -hmm. you've seen. The In the summertime, we can go to a skimmer, which basically has a device in there that limits the amount of water that comes out, and it takes the water off the top. So everything settles down. Depending on the soil conditions, those have a lot of fine material that makes the water look cloudy and there's very little in it, but it makes it look cloudy. So through the history, what I've had to do is I set up different pipes, so I have different pipe lengths. Typically takes three days after a rain before everything settles out. Now, we did have a couple issues in the fall. We had gone through all the catch basins got clean, the storm scepters got clean. Everything is now stabilized on that phase. The water comes from phase one and phase two and feeds that pond. It will take water from phase four when we get to phase four. 
we can't close that pond out till phase four is stabilized. Mm -hmm. So what we did in the fall, unfortunately this year we had no dry time at all. Mm -hmm. In the fall, we tried to clean all the sediment out we could. So we did that. Okay. But what that did, that did stir up some more sediment. And what happens is when it rained, it would just stir the bottom up. Okay, because it looked terrible last time I was over there and yeah. going it. When's the last time it was cleaned? Yeah. So the, the reason it looked terrible is because we did disturb it all to clean it. What have you done if when you drive in? It must be going to phase four. The turnaround's up here, it's all whatever. This catch basin's up there. That's still all dirt. What have you done with those? So those, if you look at those, in? those are all, right now it comes off the pavement and yep. it's all stone all around the catch basins. Okay. So. Because I mean, I was up there with Joe, I don't know, must be almost two months ago yeah. or whatever. And we were watching it come down that back swale and come through and you're looking going, those going, okay. But you, then you look, but you look at the water and bed, everything else is clean. Then you look at the pond and go, what is this? So. There is that entire swale around the back got all seeded, so that's all stabilized now. Okay. Um, there's probably a little bit that still comes in that way, but the majority of what's happening in the pond is because we stirred everything up. So you keep pulling, you keep changing that riser pipe here and there depending on what you're getting. For, what's the long term of that once everything's online? I mean, nobody's going to go play with it. All right, so when it's all completed and the outflow structures are in, there is a low, um, they have a name for it, it's not on this plan, but it's like, a, <laughs> it's a basically a stone swale that's lower than the bottom of the pond. Where is it? So it'll go from... It's not in yet? No. Okay. No. So that pond is not in... The ponds are set up for two different temporary use and permanent use. Okay. So they work totally different. So you can't use permanent use when you're in temporary stage. So permanent stage, it's going to have a low flow channel that's going to allow the water to go right out to the out. And then as the flow builds up, and it'll be the low flow channel will only allow small amounts of water out and then the pond will fill up, and then it'll slowly drain, drain up. And it'll have different stages. So there's actually three ways the water can get out of it. Well, I think there's four ways the water can get out of there. So there's a low flow. Mm -hmm. There is the first outlet, which will be the lowest. Then there's a higher outlet. Then there is like a riprap section, a like an emergency. I don't. Because there's going to be a lot of water going in that. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Yeah. Makes a little more sense because it's like, okay, I understand it's still in construction stage, but you're going, how is this going to maintain itself over time? Yeah. So that's how it'll do it. And everything has, as it goes out, <coughs> it's all <coughs> on stone and goes out a level stone spur. So it basically goes out in a slow... Mm -hmm. controlled over stone so it's not eroding anything or right. taking anything with it. Okay. Makes a little more sense. But in the, as soon as the ice is gone, we can put one of those skimmers on. Uh, which we've used, we've used one in Holden and that was as per request of DCR. Okay. So that's one of their known devices on how to. I actually like the pipes a little better, but. Right, well, I just know it always comes up. It always yeah. comes up, and I know Jen always says something about it, so it's like, okay, might as well just ask. Yeah, yeah. Well, so in, in the, the only reason for letting the pond down at all is if we did not let the pond down, and we have, like this year, the water comes up. It'll blow it up. It'll go out the two foot diameter pipe mm. and then nothing's filled. Mm. Right. Nothing will settle okay. out because you're keeping it from the high water pipe basically. Yeah. So okay. what I try to do is like I say, let it sit for three days and then slowly release 
And the different pipes do the same thing as a skimmer. Let's the water off the top so right. it's not draining from the bottom. Okay. Right now, um, I'm obviously going to have to go out there, it sounds like, for Thursday or tomorrow, because it sounds like we got rain coming. Mm -hmm. But right now, the winter time, everything settles out much quicker. As soon as you get the ice layer on there, right. you don't get the wind. The wind yeah. turns everything up, too. So right now, it's all the way down to the bottom. So everything's going, um, draining that pond right down to nothing, just the layer of ice. Okay. So I'll go back out there, like I say, it'll probably be tomorrow, because it called for warm weather and rain. Yeah. So I'll have to put that pipe back in. Okay. And I put the pipe in, the tallest one, then I let it settle out, and then I can drop it in. Yeah, I mean, everything's coming out, just coming out where that comes out, you know, you're catching it now and it's, up and it's not doing anything, so that's all fine. Just kind of one of those, okay, well, yeah. everybody keeps saying, pipes there, pipes not there. It's like, oh, what is the deal with this? Yeah, yeah. So that's, but in the springtime, that's not a problem. We can put that skimmer on there and then it'll do it all by itself. Okay. okay. And you'll have less questions. Yeah. They're going to stabilize that banking in the spring by the newest piece of that, you think? Because that a lot of that stuff didn't look very stabilized. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, didn't look like Tom was going in, but that was played in late, late fall, and you're going, "Yeah, it's not. That's not helping." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can take a close look at that. Okay. Um, since you're here, has there been any changes to the oak lee drainage? You had that open swale <coughs> kind of along the ridge, and was coming down between those two properties on Woodside. So the only thing that's changed there is um, that we did get to stabilize everything. Okay. Um, I did get feedback from the neighbors, and there were neighbors further down. They said once we did the last swale, I don't know how much you know and how much you don't, so that, yeah. that comes in. Then what we did is we also tied the next backyard in. Okay and tied that in so the next house down from that we basically did the back and the side mm -hmm. and tied that into the subtrain yep. when we did that their yard dried all up they had no more issues and the yard down below said now they no longer have any water coming in their yard okay. so those drains caught all the water so no more is going down there okay. we put two six inch sub drain pipes okay. and there is a physical it's plastic, but there's a physical catch basin in the yard okay. where it comes down. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like all the neighbors are happy that... We'll find out in the spring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jinx yourself, Tom. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it, until they see this on TV. Yeah. Right. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, well, it's like anything else is working, but that's your, that's your big test. Not trying to catch anything. Right. Just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you've stabilized, like, the top of the ridge around Oakley, too? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we hand-seeded that swale all the way around. Nice. Cool. Cool. So. I think that's all I have. Yeah. Do you have anything else? No. Jared? No, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Do you nice want this you. paper copy? If you don't mind leaving it, I can yeah. grab it. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Some, some bedroom, maybe? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be the first time we brought a full size plant in. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. I apologize for the confusion. Mm -hmm. I thought you. I thought the electronic plan had that. That's why I was like, I'm not understanding there's so what many, you're not seeing. Yeah, there's so many different versions. Yeah. It's been around so long, it, it just... Yeah. It's like Skip, because it's been so long so long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, thank you for coming in you're and welcome. discussing it. I appreciate it. Thank you all do. It's nice to see you not covered in mud. No. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a change. Are you saying it cleans up pretty good? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you about my slip? Well, I'm covered in mud, but that's okay. Well, that's... That's the story of my life, so I always get that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. My wife's friends would say, Boy, your husband cleans up good. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a nice night. Thank you, Thank you, you too. Enjoy. I will. Good luck with the storm. Mm -hmm.
All right. Uh, discussion. Chapter 61A, Land, Campbell Street. Tamika, do you have a brief synopsis of what this is? Um, <laughs> could you refer to the email in the drive? <laughs> There's another, I think there's another one today for a different property, and I don't want to, I could be confused and say wrong. All right. Um, so essentially, private owners looking to sell over three acres on Campbell Street to um, Dave Lucian. Builders. The land is to be sold is to be used for residential use. Um, it has frontage, and essentially, we are being asked if we would like the select board to waive or use its first right of refusal. Waive its first right of refusal. I don't think I said that. Right of first refusal. For, yeah, <laughs> that one. So, did this go to constant to? Uh, Ag first, because that's where they're all supposed to stop. It got sent out to all everybody simultaneously. It oh, also okay. went to the RDIC. Um, anybody that's supposed to get it, it was distributed to. You said how many acres is it? Three. 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 Three point one three six eight to be exact. Wow, that is exact. <laughs> I think. I could bring up a plan if you guys are interested. Whether or not you are is another story. Did it have an address or just a lot number? I think just lot number. Okay. This is what it looks like. What? Mm. Yep. So, assumedly, they'd have to come in front of us with an NOI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can't picture on Campbell Street. Huh? I know. So I can't to get picture bigger. where it's on Campbell Street. Oops. I'm trying to see if I can. I could just look up Warren. Maybe. If it's headed, it's not Lucy's property. No, it's. No, it's got to be down the other end. It's got. It's going to be his property, but it's yeah. right now. I would think it's down this end. Down uh, this end. I would so think so, because Rose have that swamp in the back. <laughs> the nicest okay. way to put it. We flooded the road and the beavers right. walked it. Right. Walked up Glenwood and flooded the road back there. Right, that's where most of the lots that look like yeah. that yeah. are. So I'm assuming yeah. it's this little section? Okay. Right? That didn't help me much. Well, oh, sorry. Uh, I it looks like it's so this is Brett Mill. Mill. And this is Campbell. Campbell. This Burton. is Nate's way. Oh. Here. On the corner of Glenwood. Huh. I would. Is that around where Jim Susie had built those houses on the left? I thought there was like a couple up there that. Had you mean Julian's up in the back? That up off that common driveway? That be on a, that's on the right hand side. Huh. On, sorry again. We have not worried, right? I'm sorry for the scrolling. Whoever's watching this online. Because this is. Melissa, keep going down. There's another. Garrett Henderson. There's another plan in this PDF. Uh -huh. Oh, it's there the upper it one. Yeah. Thanks, Jared. Yep. Someone's got to have their stuff together. Some days. Hey, that's where we, we know it's not so. me. We know it's definitely <laughs> not me. There's <laughs> <laughs> not even a doubt with that. <laughs> oh, that's not very far down. Okay. Yeah. We don't want nothing to do with it. No. That. It's going to be surrounded by houses eventually. Because <coughs> that's all Elbeck's houses on this side of it. Mm hmm. Yep. Nope. Yeah. We don't have an extra 120 grand, anyways, right? No. Check the Yeah, let me double check that accounting. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just check your pockets. How much did we pay to make again? Take a Not check. Enough. Take a check. Yeah. <laughs> Personal check, perhaps. <laughs> right. So um, you want a motion to to take no action. To take no action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, make so move. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor by roll call. Fog eye. Langer and I. Jens Lucci eye. Dan's eye. <laughs> So you'll notify the select board? I sure will. <laughs> <coughs> All right. You'll be able to check up to make sure I get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if you have too many redundancies in your plan, it's, <laughs> you know, if you ever want to slack off, it won't work very well. Um, All right. Follow up 165 Cannon Road. Do we have? We're, the way we left it was Peter was going to contact the folks at 91 Central Tree Road to see if oh, they would right. allow us onto the property, okay. but I have not heard anything about that. Okay. So I don't have any updates. All right. Peter. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, discussion. Uh, updating ConCom page on town website. I say we take no action. <laughs> <laughs> I can always work with you, Tamika, and, yeah. you know, just say, pull this down, like the wonderful person I am. Okay, so, unless there's anything else we would like to discuss on that. Well, I, sure I vote we have Melissa deal with it. Got it. <laughs> Is there anything else that the commission would like to talk about tonight? How about bylaws? How about no. what? How about what? <laughs> that, I'm sorry, that's not what on the agenda. What is wrong? With you? Oh, and that I definitely would have been um, thought of 48 hours in advance, so we can't discuss it. Sorry. Fair point. <clears throat> so I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor by roll call. Clock eye. Gentle Uchi eye. Langer and I. Danza I. We are adjourned at 728.